Hi, and welcome to another video on the Java application for enterprise programming. In this video, I'm going to go over the first assignment that is due called milestone number one. So this is the project scope and design. It's not really programming yet, but it's getting close. So in this document, this is the requirements for your first graded assignment. We're going to create what's a project proposal, a site map, and some division of work across your team if you happen to be working with somebody else. So first of all, we need to come up with a design describing your domain and products that you're going to be using in your application. So the tutorials will look a lot like the project that you're going to make uh, because it's meant to be a model. So here's some examples, some ideas of what you could create in your application. Let's say you create a car store and each product in your database is going to be a car with properties such as the year of the car, the model name, the option package might be deluxe or simple or regular, uh, the color of your car, the size of your motor, whether it's turbocharged, a true false statement, the price that you're going to charge, and so all of these are product uh, features you might say. You might come up with a movie rental uh, company and each product will be a movie and movies, of course, have lots of features, such as titles, years, genre, leading actor, the studio who made it. Or your products might be a little more fuzzy. So if you were to create a dating site, each product is actually a person. And so you'd be able to select somebody based on all of their properties. Here's an idea for a veterinarian clinic. You might be creating appointments as your uh, product. And so each appointment has a cost and owner name and time and procedure that you're going to be doing. Or you might come up with a product that more looks like a trip, like a service. And so your destination, demarcation point, your cost, your dates, and everything else that would be rating for a trip that a customer might choose. Or you might not be selling anything at all. You might be just keeping track of your own products. So you might have a bucket list. So things that you plan to do, estimated risk involved, and time and how much priority you put on each item. Or the last suggestion is take somebody from the Bible. Let's take a product and rate the Bible characters that you see, such as their name, their time period, their book that they appear in, the partner that they may have worked with or had an enemy relationship with, and so on. So this is a database of Bible characters. So when I say product here, it might be a car product or it might be just an idea. And so your idea in this assignment is to identify what interests you. Let's take a look at the scope of what functions we want to make in our final product. So I'm going to switch to a web browser. You can see that I'm running an application here on the local host. So this is uh, one of the tutorials and the features that we're going to expect. So you can see that I have a collection of my favorite things. Each item has an ID, a title, a description, a rating, and then two options. So if I want to create a new thing, I would click the New Thing button, and I create something nice. So I give it a name, a description, a rating, and then OK. Now, I should probably have a Back button, but it needs to... Uh, actually come back to the main screen here. And so homemade pie is now listed. I can edit this, change anything, or I can simply delete it. And let's go back, refresh the page. So there's some functions here that are missing, but most of this is uh, the core of what our application has to do. So there's no login page here, but we'll include that in the tutorials. So here's a note that says, the things that you should do, you should have a list all products page. You should have the ability to add a new product, edit the existing product, delete an item, and search. So I didn't include search here, but you'll have to do that somewhere along the line. So features that are probably out of scope include things like building a shopping cart or having a list of customer reviews. Uh, you can create order forms, but they are mostly beyond the scope of the application. So what you see demonstrated in the tutorial is pretty much what you expect to create as a, a, an assignment on your own. Part of this initial document will be to include a site map. So a site map includes all the pages and how they connect to each other. 
So to get an idea what a sitemap should look like, I have a YouTube video here and you can see what's being built. It's a Word document, it could be a piece of paper and pencil, it doesn't matter what you create it with, but it does show that the pages and uh, their hierarchy is listed here. So for instance, it would start with a login page and then the, the main index page and then the add product page and how you can navigate from one to another. So your sitemap is how you design all your links and how your page looks. So at the minimum, your site should include a login, a registration module, a way to list everything in your products catalog, the ability to create a new item, and to edit it. So that would be your sitemap. Now the next is a list of uh, what we would call risks. So potential problems with your site, and what do you think would be an obstacle to success here? So I've, I've mentioned a few things, like you might design a project that's too ambitious, your computer might die, you might have personal problems, you might not know what you're doing yet, and so here are the details. And then as you recognize risks, you come up with strategies to even avoid the problem altogether, or if you find yourself in the middle of the problem, how do you mitigate the damage? And so here's an example of some things that you might do if you have issues in your risk department. There's a funny cartoon that shows what people uh, perceive risk management to look like. So when you're done thinking through all those things, you're going to have an approval process here before you go down to milestone number two. Here's what the document's going to look like when you turn in your first assignment. First of all, it has your names, and every, every document is going to sh show us what you're currently working on, so who is responsible for what part of the project. I'm going to ask you to post your code, so it says here the get bucket or the GitHub place or wherever you post your code so I can actually download it and install it on my computer. Now here's the narrative and picture section. So general technical approach, you're going to describe what you're doing and uh, your des final design, your goal. The key technical design decisions, so what kind of frameworks you're going to work in, what kind of language you're going to be using, any special products that you need to include, any known issues, so if there's a place where uh, you can't type in a certain length of name or if you're only accepting numbers in an input field or if you know that calculations are giving error results, like you might have a tax calculation that's wrong, this is the place to show what bugs are and how you plan to fix them later. Risks are potential problems with a project so that it might not get done. And so you identify those as I showed on the table earlier. An ER diagram. So if we work with a database, we're going to ask you to create an ER diagram. Here's what an ER diagram looks like. So it's basically all the tables that you're going to build in your database and the links between them. And so these uh, documentations are important so that you don't just start coding and hope that you got the right data in place. So for figuring out how to make a ER diagrams tutorial, I went into YouTube and the first result is the company called LucidChart. So entity relationship diagrams are built for databases. And so this is a great two-part tutorial that will teach you all the basics of how to create a diagram that actually you can understand and then use it in your design. So you're going to have entities or tables and then the relationships between them. In the next section we see something called DDL scripts. A DDL script is basically a SQL export or a dump file from your database. And so I've got a couple of tutorial videos here on how to export data from your MAMP web server or using uh, uh, the online tools for the uh, portals on most websites. Here's an example of a sitemap diagram. So a sitemap diagram shows you which pages are in the main menu and then from there what you can follow through. So we would start with a login page, a response page, the main index page, you got the edit and delete items. How do we get from one page to another and can you diagram it? Here's the next item called wireframes. And so a wireframe document is basically the front end design. Where do you put all your text fields and your buttons, the headers and footers, and so your your uh, wireframes are can be drawn with pencil and paper or if you want to buy a more expensive tool you can use that. The next section is called class diagrams. So if you've developed any classes, if any objects in your object-oriented programming, 
a great way to do that is to first of all sit down and decide what the items are going to look like. So let's take a zoom in on one of these. And if you were to create a bank account, you would have properties of owner and balance. And then inheriting from that are savings accounts and checking accounts. And they have their own properties and methods that are different from the parent class. And so this is principles of object-oriented design. And uh, you should be able to make a diagram based on what you think your products are going to look like and what methods were going to be used to edit and delete them. So here's a great tutorial if you want to know what UML class diagrams look like. And so Lucidchart is a free tool and I would say that this is a great spot for you to figure out how this works. So this guy gives you a great tutorial of what relationships are between uh, class items. So the tool is simple to use. The design, however, requires some thought. So check out UML design tutorial from the guy called Lucidchart. The next section is called Service API Design. And so this is about what third-party services you're using. So if you decide to use a plugin to create graphs or tables or some other kind of programming tools, they're going to have their own customized plugins for APIs. Also, publishing. If you're going to get to assignment five here, we're going to make our own REST service. And so you're going to have to document that here in this section. My prediction is that you don't need to put anything in this section because you're not required to actually use any third-party tools in the tutorials and you're not necessarily needing them in your own project. Security talks about logins, who's allowed to access certain pages, and what we do to make sure that uh, secure data is actually secure. In our design, we're going to pretty much have everything wide open, so any login will become an administrator and can edit the accounts and the products that we have. Finally, other documentation means anything else that you've drawn. So if you've worked on a whiteboard, take a photo of it. If you've done something with storyboarding or drawings, go ahead and include them here. It helps me understand your thought process that, and how you arrived at your design. So when you're done, you're going to have all these items here and include them in a document. And then it says here your assignment will be graded in a rubric. And so it'll basically look for the checklist of everything that is supposed to be in Project 1's uh, milestone. So that pretty much wraps up what we're doing here for the first assignment called Milestone 1. Project scope and design. What is your app going to look like? What kind of data is it going to serve? And what are the screenshots going to be? So, good luck, and I hope you have a good design to get started with the semester.